Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, I'm in Los Angeles right now, and I'm here for a series of meetings that are taking place. And I'll tell you a little bit about that as we go through today. Well, we're in the final couple of days of this series that we've called A Time to Grow. And it's been an amazing time. Little did I know in my life what God would do in this period of time. Now, this coming Sunday in the weekly, the long message where we go deeper, uh, I'm going to describe a little bit about what's happened through these weeks and how God has been at work in our lives. I want to go and have a look at the, uh, today from a passage of scripture from 1 Peter. Peter is writing to the Christians that have been pushed out of Israel, pushed out uh, because of the persecution that had been taking place. And he writes to people and he says to them, be obedient, don't conform to the world around you. You know what God has done in you. You know what Jesus has done in you. Have a look at this. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, Therefore prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, Set all your hope on the grace that Christ Jesus will bring you when he's revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Let's read it one more time. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Christ Jesus will bring you when he's revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. It's a fabulous passage of scripture. What Peter is saying to these Christians who've been pushed away, who've spread out because of the persecution, because of the difficult times, is don't lose hope. You know who you are because of what Christ has done for you. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed, right? And, and he says to them, discipline your mind, be obedient to what God has revealed in you. If I was to meet you, I'm sure that you would share with me uh, what God has asked of you in your life and, what, and where God has you right now. So the things he's asked through your life, and maybe you've been a Christian your whole life, maybe you've just become serious about it in recent times, but you would be able to talk about what God has, uh, is asking of you right now, whether it is the stillness of being in his presence or whether it is being active in your work, your family, in various things that you need to do in order to, to do what he's asking you to do. Holiness, what's holiness? Holiness is pure, choosing the purity of God. But holiness, as I often define it, is, is being able to say to God, God, I'm doing what you asked me to, to do. I'm being who you asked me to be. I'm living how you've asked me to live. Because when we get to heaven and we think about when we meet God and he says, so how'd you do? He's going to just say to you, so how was your life? He's not going to say to you, how was Bruce's life? Or did you live like Bruce? Or did you live like your husband? Or did you live like your, your, your friend? Or did you live like your pastor or your priest? No, he's going to say to you, how did you do? Well, were you holy as in dedicated to me? Someone asked me, a couple of people have asked me recently, you've done a lot of traveling in the last year. And I have, I've been away, I think a little bit more than, more nights I've been away than I've actually been at home. Could never have done that when my children were young, but I can do that now. Sometimes Rosemary travels with me and sometimes she doesn't. And people have sometimes said to me, so why are you doing that? And it's because of this scripture. And it's because of scriptures like this, where it talks about being obedient. Obedience is doing what God has asked you to do. I believe that what God has asked me to do among a number of things is to raise an army of people to holiness. That is, raise a number of people to do what God is asking them to do. I believe that there are people around the world who could do exactly what I'm doing 
in sharing the gospel with so many people from all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of churches, uh, and doing that where they are. And I sense God saying to me, I want you to raise an army, raise an army of women and men to do that. And you might say, but uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. How could I be in your army? Well, you can because there are some people who are called to pray. Never leave home. There are some of you who God is calling you, I need you to the stillness of the holiness of being an older person, of resting in me. Don't have to go anywhere, just rest in me. And, 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 and you bring a holiness into the world by your rest. To some of you who are younger, who've got kids right now, He's, he's saying to you, your holiness and being part of this spiritual army is the holiness of your life. And you make the world holy as you look after your family, as you look after your children. Those of you who God's calling to improve in your business life, whatever that is, your work career, as you do that, as you become it and are able to say, I'm being all that I can be in my study, my work, in the place where I am. By being that, what are you being? You're being as holy as you can be. And the way we affect the world is holiness. It's the reason why we have so many people who pray all the time is uh, throughout the whole church. Holiness is like lifting the foundation. It's warming the temperature. And, and, and what I sense God saying to me right now is I want you to raise that army to proclaim me. And so by traveling to the places I am, I believe that there's a way to create models so that we can show people this is how you do it. And, and I've got on my heart to raise up uh, places where people could come and travel to, to encounter the presence of God. And that's what I'm working on, to building places of encounter where people can experience the presence of God either live or when they're there or even through the media itself. And, and to raise up many other women and men to do exactly what I'm doing or even better than what I'm doing. Uh, and why? Because I hear God saying, do it. Someone recently asked me and said, you've been at this for a real long time. Shouldn't you, you know, shouldn't you kind of pass it on to someone else or shouldn't you kind of just say, this is as far as it goes? And I think you do that when you hear the Lord give you permission to do that. And you don't do it before you hear, permission, you hear his permission. The world might say you stop at this age or you, or you do something different after you've done something for a while or, or go into different, but you don't do that. As Peter says here, don't do what the world wants you to do, what, do what God asks you to do. Have a look at it again. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he's revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy in all your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to be able to, uh, to be holy by doing what is asked of me. And, and in the same way, I'd say the same thing to you. God hasn't asked you to do what he's asked me to do. And so as we come to the end of this series, uh, Time to Grow, in these last couple of days, Time to Grow is really about the holiness and the presence of God in our life and being able to say, I'm doing what you ask me to do. Not what my neighbor is doing or someone else is doing, but what you ask me to do. That's what holiness is. And if you listen to me, you'll hear me say that a thousand times because it was drummed into my mind to, to respond to God in that way. I really encourage you to listen to the weekly message that will come out on Sunday. It's a longer message and we'll go deeper uh, as we are in this series and as we bring it to an end. Loving Father, we just give you thanks and we give you praise. Lord, I ask people to pray for me at this time, that as these meetings are held and as people come around, this whole idea of, of how do we reach more people for Christ, both young and older. Lord God, open the doors, show us ways to do it in ways that have never been seen before. Father, we ask for your prayer to be upon us. May we all be obedient to what you're asking of us right now. And Lord, as we all play our role in the army, yeah, that, that sense of a group of people disciplined to do, that you would show us our role in that. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God's never, ever, ever far from you.